from Richmond Fairgrounds Raceway in Richmond, Virginia, it's the Wrangler 150. Brought to you by the Wrangler brand. The brand worn by Dale Earnhardt and Ricky Rudd. Live it to the limit in Wrangler. By Mobile Detergent Gasoline. Power for your everyday driving needs. And by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And good day to you from the heart of American stock car racing, the half mile Richmond Fairgrounds in Virginia. For USA Network, I'm Ken Squire, ready to bring you the eighth annual $40,000 24 car Wrangler 150. And delighted to have working with us one of the all time greats of stock car racing, Buddy Baker. A spunky day, a little windy and cool here at Richmond, Virginia. Buddy, what's it going to do to these competitors? Well, I think it's going to keep the field real tight because uh, you won't have the tires heating up like you would on a 90 degree day it is not just brisk it's cold and uh i think you're going to see uh, a car when it gets a little hung out it's going to go ahead and spin where in the on the warmer days the car will, will get a second bite but today the tires are are going to play an important part it's going to change a lot of race strategy also in our pit communication center today standing by will be dave to spain and working along pit road jerry garrett along with the gentleman who's had a lot of experience on this racetrack also a former daytona 500 mile winner we're delighted to welcome benny parsons indeed it is a chilly day here and a bit on the windy side at richmond virginia buddy these late model sportsman cars look so much like grand national automobiles but indeed they are a far different breed of cat examining that story here's benny parsons the biggest difference in late model sportsman racers and grand national racers is the weight and that is caused by the 311 on the hood of Jack Ingham's Skull Bandit. This is the cubic inch engine that he has in his car. And the lesser the cubic inch, the less that the car has to weigh. With a 311 cubic inch, the car only has to weigh 2,950 pounds. A Grand National car has to weigh 3,700 pounds regardless of the size of the engine. That's 750 pounds, and that's a lot of difference here at a racetrack like Richmond. Benny Parsons, who earlier filed that comparison story. Right now, Benny is standing by with a pole sitter. Tommy Ellis, pole winner, is the weather today going to be a factor? Yeah, you know, Benny, it's definitely going to be a factor. I, I'm, I'm worried about it because uh, two things we set up yesterday in 70-degree in weather, and uh, the call, the call was, was perfect. You know, I had it dialed in. I, I went out and got it in the race set up as well as qualifying. I knew exactly what we had to do. I like to run this race with about 10 or 15 degrees push with the race set up. And, uh, you know, we had that yesterday, and we come here this morning, and, and we ran again with the, with the same thing. And uh, I'm a little bit worried now because I feel like the track is going to be tight, maybe too tight, and maybe the push might hurt me. Uh, I feel like right now, with the weather being what it is, maybe uh, a neutral setup would work really good for 150 laps. But we've got about 10 degrees of push in it, and I'm going to try to live with it. Okay, we'll go to Jerry Garrett in the outside post. Dale Jarrett, the number two qualifier. Dale, last year in this race, didn't have such good luck. You crashed. That's right. We did have a little bad luck, but I think things are going our way a little bit more this year, I hope. Uh, we did have a good qualifying run. We're looking for good things today from the Econolodge Pontiac. Sam Ard, last year you had this late mile sportsman division uh, standing on its ear. Today you qualified third. How are you going to get around that front car? <laughs> the best way I can, Benny. You know how it is here. It has, sometimes we have to push and shove a little bit. Sam Marr says we're going to see some pushing and shoving today, folks. Number four qualifier, Jack Ingram, a former national champion. Jack, you're going to go for the championship starting today? I hope we uh, make a good shot at it today. We, uh, we'd we like to win this race. We've been practicing very well this morning, and we're going to try our best. Well, it's one of the most competitive fields ever, and it should be in a dandy race. Tommy Ellis established a late model sportsman record for the Richmond Fairgrounds in qualifying, breaking the record he himself set in February of 1980. The old record, 96.4 miles per hour. Ellis's new mark is 97.8. The field is almost totally comprised of Pontiacs here today, with the exception of one Ford, two Chevrolets, and one Oldsmobile. And now let's take a look at the starting lineup for today's Wrangler 150. Ellis on the pole, Dale Jarrett still seeking his first win beside him. Then two previous winners, Sammy Ard and Jack Ingram. Next comes Bob Ingram, no relation to Jack and Dale Earnhardt. Row number four, Bubba Nissen, badly hurt a year ago on the comeback trail. Eddie Falk and Jeff Hensley in row five, and in row six comes the VMI graduate, Charlie Luck. 
in row number seven it's the son of David Pearson Larry Pearson in car 21 and then coming to row eight is Tommy Houston with his car number six in row number nine another veteran Bosco Lowe there were two qualifying periods for this event and the reason that you find people like Bosco Lowe and Tommy Houston out back was they were not around in that first qualifying period and they'll really have some scratching to do to make it through the field a cold brisk day really tough on traction as we get ready for a start the man up in front Ellis Jarrett and the man trying to win it for a second straight year Sammy Ard in the double zero will start on the inside of the second row but the guy who really has to come out fighting early is this man Tommy Houston in car number six as we prepare for the start of the Wrangler 150. Pace car is coming in. The field moves down out of turn number four on the half mile Richmond Fairgrounds. The Wrangler 150 ready to go with a new record setter on the pole. Tommy Ellis brings the field down and breaks as he takes the green flag to a one car length advantage as Sammy Art squirts down the inside last year's winner and goes into second place the double zero car. Jack Ingram maintaining fourth as they unlimber the machines in the back straightaway for the first time. 150 laps in this Wrangler 150. The fifth place car is now Dale Earnhardt, a one car sliding in turn number three, and he's head on to traffic. Spin out just as we get underway. It's car number 02 looping in turn number three Elton Sawyer Jr. of Chesapeake Virginia spinning just at the start of the event this fella had a fine year last year won some 13 races but on this very slippery track buddy out of control right in the initial part of the going yes and I noticed uh, Hedgecock car is smoking pretty badly and he's coming in the pits now I don't know whether he is directly involved or not well, the Edgecock car is another one of the top runners from the mid-Atlantic region of NASCAR. And he has gone back behind the fence, so it could be sayonara for him this afternoon. The light on the safety car, let's see if it stays on or goes off. It goes off, and that indicates that there will be one lap and they will be underway. Ellis will be in front, single file restart with Sammy Ard, who won this race going the entire distance, the leader back in 1983 in second spot. Then comes the story of Dale Earnhardt at number 32, driving another Pontiac. Earnhardt is this, uh, rather, uh, uh, D Dale Jarrett, whose father was the twice sportsman champion before he came the twice grand national champion of NASCAR. Dale Earnhardt lies fifth, and in between him and Jarrett lies the four-time national sportsman champion, Jack Ingram. Ingram, a winner of this Wrangler 150 back in 1977 here at Richmond. Pace car is coming in. Set for a restart. Field rolls out of turn four, and we're back underway. Immediately, it's Earnhardt going to the inside and trying to make a move on Ingram. Back straight away, Ellis in front, Art in second. There goes Sammy. Working the fifth of 150 laps in the Wrangler 150. Earnhardt stays in fifth. Then there's a short gap back to car number 51, Robert Ingram Jr. of Virginia Beach. Running in the sixth position, he is no relation to Jack Ingram. Back straight away, Art closes and number 11 moves down the inside. Dale Jarrett fighting with car number 11, Ingram, holding on to third spot. As they push, try to move each other around, of which you can do a lot of that on this size track, buddy. Well, you can do a lot of uh, moving around, but uh, the thing of it is right now, they look pretty equal down the straightaway, and it's very hard to make uh, a move going into the corner because everybody's trying to get to the inside of the racetrack. Allison Hart. Locked up in a good squabble up in front. Ellis not giving any room. He's a tough Virginia driver. Won the Oxford 250 back in 1983. Largest race. And we have another car spinning in turn number one. It is the Hensley car. Jeff Hensley of Bridgeway, Virginia, lies up against the wall in turn one and two. Caution is on for the second time. And this caution comes out as the field completes its eighth lap. Jeff Hensley nephew of Jimmy Hensley, a veteran of many races in this division, spins, gets himself back underway, but it is a slippery racetrack on which the contest is being played today. 
the green flag is out and we're racing once again at Richmond and Sammy Art dives to the inside. He and Ellis touch. Art is your new leader. Ellis getting pushed to the outside and it is Sammy Art, last year's winner, going for two in a row. Back straight away. Here comes Jack Ingram down the inside trying for third. And Earnhardt's going with him. And Earnhardt's going with him as we see here down the inside going into third spot is number 11, Jack Ingram. And with him into the fourth position goes Dale Earnhardt dropping Dale Jarrett back into fifth position. As you say, that's a drop kick when you do that. Uh, one car moves the car out of the groove. He's a little bit loose, and the next car takes advantage, full advantage of it. Moving up all the time is the red car of Tommy Houston. He is now closing on Charlie Luck at 45. There's your leader. It is Sammy Ard out in front. Staying in that second spot now is Ellis. Top five cars all together out of turn four. Ard the leader. National Sportsman Champion a year ago. There you see those leaders once again coming down into the back straightaway and Ellis trying to drop kick the leader. Meanwhile, good scrap develops further back and look at Ellis work on the back of Sammy Yard and right there with him is Jack Ingram. Close to the front three and there's a real struggle going on for fourth. Jared trying to hold off a very intensive campaign on the part of Dale Earnhardt. Front three, back in turn three. It's old-fashioned racing out there right now, buddy. They're doing their jobs. I'm telling you, there's been some terrific moves on, on people. There's the zero car on the back straightaway, letting out a bunch of smoke. Alan Applegate's car, number zero, showing a lot of smoke. They hit him in the pits briefly. That was the car Buddy Baker was talking about a few moments ago. Black flag is out. Consultation flag comes out on number zero. Incidentally, the number 30 car has returned to the race. Bubba Adams, lot 88, it's all over for Jay Hedgecock today. Now there you see the scramble for the lead. Good war, right up in front. There's the third place car, just about 10 car lengths back. That's Ingram in third. The fourth spot is still number 32. Jarrett staying in there looking for that first big win. Here's Ellis back on the inside, nailing him, trying to go through 73, slowing down. Billy Hogan of Troy, North Carolina, pulls in. He's in trouble and may not get back to the pits. Billy Hogan is bringing out the third caution of the day in just 30 laps in this Wrangler 150. The car that started in 19th position comes to rest on the bottom of the racetrack. Apparently, motor trouble will eliminate Hogan's efforts today. So we have in front Sammy Ard with the second spot Tommy Ellis and in third place Jack Ingram with caution on the track in the Wrangler 150. The car of Billy Hogan one of the two Chevrolets eliminated after just 30 laps of competition. Right now it's Sammy Ard up in front Tommy Ellis is second Jack Ingram third Dale Jarrett fourth Dale Earnhardt is in fifth. And that red number six is lying ninth on the field. Tommy Houston just in front of him is the car of Bubba Nissen. Let's go to the pits for this report from Dave Despain. Ken, typically in stock car racing, a yellow flag means a rush onto pit road for all kinds of service. We're not seeing that here today. This is a 150 lap race. These cars have enough fuel and quality tires to go the whole distance. If you come in, even under a yellow flag, you've got to go all the way to the back of the pack. For the most part today, when we see people in the pits, it means they're in big trouble. Ready for a restart. The battle for second position is Iron tries to pull away. Ellis there and Jack Ingram pulling up. I don't understand why Tommy's getting beat on these restarts. He must have transmission trouble or something because he's usually very alert on restarts. Tommy Ellis lies in the second spot. Jack Ingram has pulled up the third as Earnhardt drops the spot, goes back to fourth. Caution has been flown three times and we were right on the 20 laps. It is now up to 25. The scoreboard had us in third and they picked up 10 laps in a hurry there. Coming around, they complete 26 laps this time. There you see the leader, double zero. It is Sammy Ard running in first. Here comes Tommy Ellis in second, and there in third is Jack Ingram. The man on the move out back is number six. Here comes Tommy Houston down the inside, sliding through cars. 
Houston picking up another spot as he gets under Eddie Falk in the 04. That's Houston. He's now finding himself moving into eighth and closing on car number 95. Bubba Nissen is just in front of Houston as he continues to unwind some very good laps. The leader is Sammy Arn in the double zero. National champion a year ago, winner of this Wrangler 150 one year back. There you see him in a car that's brand new. It's never been raced before. Built it all himself. The suspension, the motor, it all comes out of the imagination of Sammy Yard, homegrown right in his backyard. Ellis stays second, Ingram third, Jarrett fourth, Earnhardt fifth. And the number 51 car, Robert Ingram Jr., now lies six. The man that's going to put some pressure on them shortly is the number six car as Tommy Houston, who started in the 16th position. Now finds himself in eighth. There he is, right behind 95. And what a story on 95. 95 goes a little high and trying to move in is, this, is the number six car. That number 95 is Bubba Nissen out of Virginia Beach. He was injured at Rockingham, North Carolina a year ago, spent five months in the hospital. And this is his try of trying to get back into it. Back with the leaders again. And there you see Jack Ingram, one car retiring here. And that is Ingram Jr., number 51. He had been running fifth overall in the field. He pulls out of it. Ingram Jr. pulling out at number 51. Car number six pulls up on the 95. You're back with double zero, the leader, Sammy R. Now number six is trying to move on the inside at turns one and two. There is that 95, Nissan staying in front of Tommy Houston, and they have a real war going for position. <laughs> You're further back in the field now. Battle for six features the 95 and the six car. Sammy Ard in front. And there's the six getting just underneath this, and he can't quite get through, buddy. Well, he can't. Uh, the 95 is running down the straightaway quite well, and uh, he, he's actually handling better, but he positioned himself, to, and uh, of course, he's cutting him off a little bit coming off the corner, not meaning to, but uh, that's just short track racing. But he'll get him sooner or later. Now he's got an inside move. The 95 taking a higher line out of turn two and closing once again is that number six car. He comes back on him another time. Leader, Sammy Ard, coming by. First place car, Ard, who entirely dominated the Wrangler 150 a year ago. The National Sportsbook Champion of NASCAR. Out in front and looking smooth. Ripple free in a brand new automobile. Ellis lies in second. Jack Ingram maintaining third. Earnhardt is in fourth. Eddie Falk in trouble. We'll be back with more in a moment. Caution of the day has been put on the track here at the Richmond Fairgrounds. Now let's look at it again and watch this move by number 02 Elton Sawyer coming up as you see these two cars being removed from the first turn. That's Bubba Adams' blue car and Charlie Luck, graduate from VMI year ago. Now here they come with Charlie Luck first, Wayne Patterson second, and right here Luck is in trouble. The 02 is closing. Patterson backs off for a moment and the 02 up on the high side just barely he creeps up to the outside as luck goes down to the inside and o2 sawyer also had the right saint there buddy wow i'm telling you that looked like a super speedway wreck really that's the way they they happen uh, you see one car just beginning to get in trouble and then cars are a victim of circumstance and that's what happened here well, one of the cars you're going to want to watch, remember, he spun on the first lap. He was back in the 15th position, and Sawyer in the 02 continues to fly through traffic. And he is picking up more positions here as some of the leaders have now been knocked out. And look at the attrition rate begin to build on this Wrangler 150. Let's go to Benny Parsons standing by on pit road. Ken, I'm on pit road, and I have with me Charlie Luck, driver of car 45, the Luckstone Special. Charlie, what happened down in turn one? Uh, Benny, we were running pretty good, and uh, me and Wayne Patterson, I guess, got together there coming out of four, and he just hit me in the tail end hard enough to turn me loose, and I tried to correct it coming down the front stretch, and the car turned around backwards with me, and then somebody hit me head on, so... You know, that's just the way it goes. I'd like to thank our two sponsors, uh, Dryden Oil and Lux Stone. Both of those companies have been fantastic to our racing program. And we'll be back next time, hopefully with some better luck. 
in the eighth renewal of the Wrangler 150 at Paul Sawyer's famed Richmond Fairgrounds where the NASCAR Grand National have come since 1959. Late model sportsman championship race with Sammy Arn, last year's winner, out in front. In second place, the man who set a new track record, an all-time record for this facility, that's Tommy Ellis. And then comes Jack Ingram, the four-time national sportsman champion in third. Then in fourth, as we get ready for resumption, it's the Dale Jarrett car still looking for his first win and right behind him comes Dale Earnhardt underway front five easily into turn number one the story right now lies in the fifth position there lies Bubba Nissen and with him comes Tommy Houston on the back straightaway wheeling through cars as well working his way up through is the number 02 of Elton Sawyer Jr. from Chesapeake Virginia going all the way to the back the start of the race when he spun. There you see Houston working on Nissan another time at turn number two and just can't quite get through there. Well, he just can't make the move. He's running well enough. If he ever gets all the way up the side of him, he'll make the move, but he just can't get position right. Meanwhile, Bosco Lowe with his brand new machine for this year, another homegrown car, Bosco Lowe has squeezed out another spot and from the back of the field, he finds himself now up to eight and he has passed the 0-2 of Sawyer, relegating him to ninth. Leader coming by. It's Sammy Ard out in front, and there you see Tommy Ellis about eight car lengths back in second place. 50 laps by, 100 laps to go, a third of the way into the Wrangler 150 when they come by this time. Five retirees thus far from the 24 car starting field. Leaders come across, and at the half, at the third of the race. Hard stays in front. Ellis stays second. Ingram maintaining third. And they have just enough interval between them, so everything looks pretty smooth among those front runners, buddy. It does that, but I noticed uh, they're giving him a little bit too much uh, leeway there at the very start of each restart. He's getting uh, about a six or seven car length lead on him just on the, on the get. There you see Sammy Ard running up in front of the double zero. You saw him on USA a year ago just absolutely dominate this race, leading every lap. But he has a brand new car for 1984. It's the first time it's ever been seen. And earlier we talked to Sammy Ard. What's the problem with the first race of the season? First race of the season is always tough. You know, everybody's trying to sort the cars out and get them to work and everything. And the cars ain't been on the racetrack, and a lot of them don't get them sorted out exactly right. And it makes for a bunch of ill-handling automobiles. And the biggest problem here is you got to stay out of trouble all day long. Sammy Ard, the man now up in front. That second-place car is creeping a little closer. Tommy Ellis trying to get up there. Third spot by himself, Jack Ingram. Then back in fourth position, Dale Jarrett, followed by Dale Earnhardt in fifth. And the battle for sixth position is right there out of turn four. There you see Bubba Nissen in the 95, and right behind him, the man who started 16th dives down to the inside, trying to move through another time is Tommy Houston, and just can't quite make it. Well, Ken, what I've noticed is uh, the sixth car is, 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 well, he's making a move now, but he's getting cut off a little bit. It's nothing intentional, but uh, he's just having a problem, and, and it seems that uh, the sixth car is moving out in the middle part of the corner just a little bit, and he can't make his turn. There you see again, Nissan closing the door on car number six, Houston, as he tries to move up in the Wrangler 150 on the famed Richmond Fairgrounds. 55 laps complete. 195 to go. The number one car, and Houston makes it this time. Down on the inside, number six, Nissan back, and look at 27, Bosco Lowe pull up. Bosco Lowe's trying to go through. Car number 27, just finished. And they actually took some Crayola to put white numbers on the side of the car just before the race, that number 27. Bosco Lowe making another move on the inside. He's going for Tommy Houston. It's Bosco Lowe breaking loose. Well, Bosco Lowe's been in racing a long time, and he's a very talented race driver, and he's got his race car handling. Seems like uh, as good as anybody on the racetrack. Battle for six, and from 18th position, that number 27. The old campaigner, Bosco Lowe, 
has now taken over. It looked like Tommy Houston had it all made up, but Bosco Lowe is one of the quickest cars out here. That, a 311 cubic inch power plant, running at 2,950 pounds. Back comes Tommy Houston. <laughs> he nails him in the back end. Well, Ken, this is what short track racing is all about. It's uh, split second timing, and these boys are really going at it. Bosco Law out of Fairview, North Carolina, the man on the move. Up to sixth position and definitely the fastest car on the racetrack at this juncture. Sammy R back in lap traffic and taking a car on the inside as he goes down into turn number one. 60 laps complete in the Wrangler 150 from Richmond Fairgrounds. Sam A.R. trying to win it back to back two years in a row. Battle continues to heat up further back in the pack as the 27 of the six car fighting for sixth position and their own war. And now Ingram. Looks like he's had enough of riding in third. He wants to come after Ellis. There he is, right there. That's the scramble for Up. second. Ellis, Ellis is going high. He's in the wall. Something to miss on Tommy Ellis's car. Tommy Ellis slamming into the outside retainer in turn three. He comes down the main straightaway. There is no caution out, but the front end is all kinked up on car number 12. Ken, he had something break on the right front wheel going in the corner. It went directly up into the wall. What a bad break for Tommy Ellis. Fourth in the national standings a year ago. He retires, and Sammy Ard can take a deep breath here. Jack Ingram now runs by himself in the second position. The Iron Man, Jack Ingram, used to run five. They said he could run as many as eight shows in seven days, afternoon and evening on either Sundays or Saturdays, wherever he could find a matinee. Now there's Ellis getting out of his car. Going down into turn number three, and you saw it happen. Ingram was there, he's getting ready to make a move, but all of a sudden he was given second place. Just inherited it when Tommy Ellis had a problem. Hard leading in lap traffic. Down these straightaways at about 120, 125 miles an hour, then eases out to an almost flat old fairgrounds half mile turn. Well, it's a, a very slick surface if you get out of the groove, but these guys... Now, there you see Art in front. Now, there is the Earnhardt car, Dale Earnhardt, that Oldsmobile. That car left the field up in Toronto last year on the Scrooge Tour when it dominated the Northern NASCAR race. He could have won it, they say, by two laps. The Ed Whitaker car number seven. The lone Oldsmobile out here now moves into fourth position. You're in the main straightaway at the Richmond Fairgrounds. Watching Sammy R to the double zero. Try to make it two in a row and become the first man to win the Wrangler 150 back to back. Leader is Ard. Second is Ingram, Dale Jarrett. Now picking up third spot as Tommy Ellis retired. Fourth is or the Dale Jarrett in third, Dale Earnhardt in fourth, Moscow Lowe has come to fifth, Tommy Houston to sixth, Wayne Patterson is in seven, Bubba Nissen is now in eighth. Alton Sawyer up tonight. Give you an idea of the interval just a bit. Good battle going down in turn number one. The six and the 27 are back at it another time. Bosco Lowe on the inside. And there's a real fence buster going on, going into three. There's Houston just up on the outside. Houston getting through it. Back comes Bosco Lowe on the inside. The battle for six, and right now Tommy Houston, who started 16th, is into six. Bosco Lowe trying to chase him down to the 27 car. That was a great move. He made his move on the outside. On a short track, that is very hard to do. He passed Bosco Lowe on the outside, though. Better than 100 laps have been completed in the Wrangler 150. 103 are now shown as complete. Getting down toward the finish. And Sammy Ard in this double zero car. 311 cubic inch power plant, weighs 2,950 pounds, stays out in front. Working the lap traffic. Ard back in the main straightaway. National champion defending. And the winner of this event one year ago, Ard stays first. There's J. 
Jeff Hensley down on the inside and also the 04 of Eddie Falk. Sammy Art in that double zero on the NASCAR circuit last year won $192,000. And of course, he won his first super speedway race last year when he won at Charlotte, North Carolina in a late model sportsman event. Sammy Art out in front, drove for the Thomas Brothers back in 1972. Uh, as one of the stunt drivers in the motion picture on the life of Junior Johnson, the last American hero, becoming a, a bit of a legend himself in the South these days, Sammy Ard. Sammy Ard lapping Jeff Hensley's, whether that's Bubba Nissen in 95 putting a lap on Jeff Hensley. Good to see him back in competition. A real lick a year ago in Rockingham, North Carolina. Spent five months in the hospital getting himself stitched back together. There's Ard, the double zero. He was fired by the Thomas brothers after losing a championship back in 1973 to Jack Ingram. Summer of 75, rehired, and it's been a happy marriage ever since. But his nemesis, Jack Ingram, lies second. Double zero. In front, Sammy Ard. Lapping cars at will. And he seems to have made all the right decisions on this car to keep it up in front. And they're about to overlap the last car in the lead lap. 16 car. Tommy Lawson there. You're back with Wayne Patterson out of Richmond, Virginia, a local driver who's had his share of action today. Hard stays up in front. His Pontiac now leading by a straightaway over Jack Ingram in second place. There's the sixth place car, number six, and he's closing to put a lap on number 21, Larry Pearson, the son of David Pearson. There's the six up on the outside and directly in front of him, number 21, Larry Pearson. So Houston. Better come from a long way back, still weaving his way through traffic. Here's Benny Parsons. I'm down in the I'm down in the garage area again with Tommy Ellis, the pole setter. And Tommy, what happened to your car? Well, uh, one of them slower cars over there was coming in, dumped some oil on the racetrack right in the groove, and when I hit it, it just called just shot sail straight to the wall. And uh, fortunately, I guess Jack was behind me and could see where it was. And anyway, he he missed it and. Uh, Caution never did come out, but it's just one of them things. I don't know whether the guy blowed water out or oil, whatever he did. It just, when I hit it, I just sailed straight in the wall. The pole setter got some oil, hit the wall, and turned three again. Record setter as well. A new record for this track. A 97 mile an hour average was turned in nearly 98 by Tommy Ellis. But he's out of it. And now it's Sammy Ard's race to win, but he's got to keep it all gathered up. He is so smooth, so consistent. One would wonder why he hasn't moved on into the Grand National ranks, that somebody wouldn't want a driver of his quality and capability. Well, Ken, there's kind of a joke going. He don't want to take a cut in salary. He's winning all the races he runs in now. And, uh, you know, he won at Charlotte last year on the major speedways and beat quite a few of the Grand National drivers. He's a very talented race driver. Nearly $200,000 in winning and a very stout sponsorship to pay for the car. It's not a bad way to spend the summer. If you don't mind standing on your head once in a while out here at about 100 <laughs> miles an hour. Sammy Ard sails down at a turn number one. Jack Ingram is in the second position. The question now remains for third spot. And that is the Dale Earnhardt car. The six is catching. Car number six, Tommy Houston is trying to catch. Tommy Houston is trying to catch the fourth place car, Dale Earnhardt. There is still about a 25 car length difference between them. Tommy Houston in fifth, closing on Dale Earnhardt right now. Laps 117, now complete. Bubba Nissen has brought out another caution flag and he has created what could be one of the most exciting finishes of the year. For now, there remain just 15 laps with five cars, all potential winners running that lead lap. This man could be the key figure. Number 11, Jack Ingram. He lies second in the overall. There's a lap car, Jim Lawson, just in front of him. And then Sammy Yard's double zero, which has dominated the event, stays up on the point. 
The third position is Dale Jarrett, still seeking that first victory. And lying fourth overall is Earnhardt, who's always a serious contender on a track of this size. But the major story thus far has been Tommy Houston. He's come from 16th position to now lie fifth, and his times have equaled any car on the track over the last 20 or 30 laps. Ken, that caution flag is a great equalizer. That puts everybody right back in line, and if you make one mistake now, that's just a position that'll be very hard to come back on. Buddy Baker, we're just about set to get going once again. The pace car ready to come in as you watch Bubba Nissen's car still being administered to. He had a little bit of a skirmish with the barrier up in turn number two. The field is coming down. They're gathered up. It is just about time for that there green flag to fall. It is out, and Sammy Ard breaks from in front. As they come by. 136 laps are in the book down to that last 14. And look at that scramble up in front. Everybody wants to take a shot. There's your second place car. Number 11, Jack Ingram. Sammy Yard out in front, right behind him comes Jarrett. And behind him is Earnhardt and then Tommy Houston. Now what's happened to the tires in that caution period? There goes Jarrett down on the inside of Ingram. And here comes number seven fighting off number six again. Golly, can you believe Jared it? has pulled up Something's Ingram's wrong. in trouble. He got a flat or something. Something is wrong on number 11, and Ingram falls back about three spots. Sammy Ard stays in front. Jared trying to win his first major goes up into second spot. A little bob and weave out of turn number two. Into the back straightaway. Third spot is now Earnhardt, and Houston stays right in her court. Ken, I think I know what happened to the number 11 car. You have to scrub these tires. They pick up a lot of uh, oil and rubber as you go around slow, and he might have just had a slick condition. When they restarted, he was all over the racetrack. 49 is trying to move under Ingram, and Ingram blocks him going down into turn number one. Now, there's Tommy Houston in that red number six. And he's moving in once again on car number seven. Trying to get a clean shot. The yellow car on the outside is going up around number 11. That is Wayne Patterson. He's fighting for position. He is fighting to get a spot up there. That number 11 is in fifth. Wayne Patterson is in sixth. Look at that. We have two battles going on further back in the field, and Wayne Patterson is there on the outside. Here comes Tommy Houston to the inside. Not getting there. Okay. Wayne Patterson, rim riding. Now Houston on the inside is going underneath Earnhardt. Earnhardt comes back on the outside. Some great racing in the Wrangler 150 here in Richmond. Dale Earnhardt in car number seven stays third. Tommy Houston in the fourth position. Jack Ingram is in fifth. Wayne Patterson in sixth. And all four of those cars slugging it out for a spot. Laps running down. About eight to go. Look at this fight. There's your leader, Sammy Ard, off the corner. Dale Jarrett doing just a magnificent job in second place. He stayed clear of all the trouble today. He's maintained a good... There he is in uh -oh. the second running position. But the battle is further back. Those four cars all grouped together. Here they come as we get down to the laps. There's Dale Jarrett back... Dale Jarrett in that second position. Now those four battling go back into turn number one. There it is going down in turn number one, and Ingram comes alive. It's Ingram on the inside. He's taking Houston. He's going after Earnhardt. But on the outside, back again comes Tommy Houston. Jack Ingram relegated back once again into the fifth position. On the outside, Wayne Patterson pulls up. Four cars fighting for a spot. Back they go to turn number one. Wayne Patterson showing some smoke on the outside. Jack Ingram comes back to the inside. Uh -oh. Houston slides, hits the wall, and gets almost nailed. Oh, me. Slid right across the track. That brings out caution at lap 147 as we get down toward the end of it. Tommy Houston going for all the marbles, lost the ball. He gets himself righted, coming around. Sammy Ard and Dale Jarrett up in front, doing just magnificently. But behind them, it is a hurricane, or it's aftermath. 
the six car. Tommy Houston, winner of the Wrangler 150. And there is one to go, I believe. Let's see if they're gonna finish under green. Green flag is out. They're coming down for the final lap. Taking a, as they go into the final lap. It is Sammy R down in front. We'll take a look at replay right after the event is over. Bosco. In that second spot is the 32. This is it. The finish at Bosco alone, the 27 out back. He's been able to move up through. He's getting under Wayne Patterson. Here they come, driving for the finish. Patterson comes up on the outside. What the winner is hard. It's over with Sammy Ard, the first man to win the Wrangler 150 back to back. Across in second with a marvelous finish. It is Dale Jarrett, number 32, pulling up to congratulate Sammy R. Finishing in third spot was Dale Earnhardt. Wayne Patterson, I believe, will get fourth at the line as Jack Ingram fell back a spot as they came across. We'll get an opportunity in just a moment to take a look at that action that eliminated Tommy Houston from a shot at the overall in this event. All were gathered up, and Tommy Houston went to the high side and looked like he was going to buy the whole car as he spun from the high side all the way across the racetrack. He was able to finish the race. There's your winner, Sammy Ard, headed for victory lane. Sammy Ard in victory lane here in Virginia at the Richmond Fairgrounds. Let's take another look at just how he finally arrived here today and that wild activity coming out of turn number two. The red car on the outside. That's Tommy Houston. He gets up in the marbles. A little loose material on the outside of the track. He prangs the wall on the outside, then bounds right in front of Bosco Lowe and takes the barrier on the inside to wrap up his day. Let's go to victory lane. Sam, come on out of here and let's talk about this thing. It looked fairly easy, was it? It wasn't none too easy. Tommy and Jack just got to racing together and let me get away from them. And I had smooth sailing from there on. It kept the old car hooked up pretty good all day long. It looked like the car was hooked up excellent. You said at the beginning you thought maybe you just got to do some pushing and shoving. You didn't have to do any, did you? No, I never got into nobody. Tommy gave me plenty of room whenever I got there. He gave me room to go, so I went on by. Yeah, everything just went smooth. Uh, you couldn't ask for nothing to go no better. As long as Thomas Brothers feed this thing some country ham, we're going to keep on trucking. Jerry Garrett? Well, Dale Jarrett, good finish, but not quite good enough. Well, that's right. We did have a good run. The car got a little bit loose towards the end, and that uh, didn't let me get up with Sam like I wanted to. But for the first short track, this was a brand-new race car, and we didn't really know what to expect. So, yeah, it was a good finish today. How disappointed are you at not winning, though? Oh, well, not too disappointed. Second, uh, that's not too bad, especially uh, to the defending uh, Bush Late Mall Sportsman champion. So uh, we'll get them next time. Well, it could have been a lot worse, Ken. Dale Jarrett went four runner-up finish positions in 1983 and began the 1984 season with another second here today and, of course, was 18th at Daytona in the Goodies 300 just a couple of weeks before this event run today on the Richmond Fairgrounds. So there's the story of the Wrangler 150. Sammy Ard is victorious. Dale Jarrett takes second. Dale Earnhardt is third. Wayne Patterson defeats Jack Ingram in that struggle for fourth. And the old Iron Man winds up in fifth position. For Dave Despain, Jerry Garrett, Benny Parsons, and Buddy Baker, I'm Ken Squire at the Richmond Fairgrounds where the Wrangler 150 for the second straight year belongs to Sammy Ard. Production assistance was furnished by the Baker Equipment Engineering Company of Richmond, Virginia, supplying your utility equipment rental needs. Bucket trucks like these, aerial man lifts, even digger derricks. Baker Equipment, Hanover House Best Western, 24-hour restaurant cafeteria, Suzanne's Lounge, I-95 at Adley Exit, just north of Richmond, Virginia. Texaco Products, a Jason System Charter Bus Stop. And by, when in the sunny south, visit Florida's RV Supermarket, General RV, a division of Whittington Brothers, locations in Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, and Orlando. The Wrangler 150 has been brought to you by the Wrangler brand. The brand worn by Dale Earnhardt and Ricky Rudd. Live it to the limit in Wrangler. By mobile detergent gasoline. Power for your everyday driving needs.